Hey, Kara Gott Warner here, editor of Creative Knitting Magazine, and today's video is all about mosaic knitting, which is a form of color work knitting, and it's super easy to learn, trust me, because I am so not a fan of color work methods that require you to work with multiple colors across a row. Believe me, I break out in a sweat when it comes to managing more than one color at a time, but with mosaic, that is so not the case, which is why I absolutely love it. So, let me share a little rundown about this technique and why it's unique to other color work methods. Mosaic is a form of slip stitch knitting, and if you're familiar with this, you'll know that when you slip a stitch, it creates an elongated look to the stitch. And essentially, when you slip a stitch, you leave it unworked on that row, which brings the stitch up from the previous row, or rows, making it more exaggerated and elongated. So, as I mentioned, this is a super easy technique because if you can knit simple stripes and you know how to slip stitches, then you're all set. Okay, so here's the simple explanation of how it works. You slip the stitches in a row that should be the other color, and if you're knitting the dark color, you slip the light. And if you are knitting the light color, you slip the dark. So just hang on to that for a second, and I'll talk about that in just a few moments. Let's take a look at these three mosaic stitch squares, which are made with Plymouth Encore worsted. Now these are in the winter 2015 issue of Creative Knitting, and they're part of our regular knit along series called Learn a Stitch, Share the Love. So you can see these are really kind of neat, these squares, and they also come with two patterns, the Wondrous Wristers and Color Splash Toppers. These were designed by Beth Whiteside, and they are available as a free download on creativeknittingmagazine.com. But they're only there for as long as the winter 2015 issue is on the newsstand. So go get your copy and meet me back here to get started learning how to knit mosaic. All right, so if we take a look, you can see some of these elongated stitches. These are the slip stitches that I mentioned just a few moments ago, and I'm just using the tip of my needle so you can see what they look like. And so basically, you're creating this elongated look that slips up the stitch and from, the other, from the other rows, and it creates this really pretty stitch pattern. So let's take a look at what the back looks like. So you know what the wrong side looks like. It's pretty obvious. And so here you can see examples of those slipped stitches. They're just really elongated threads, horizontal threads. And then you can clearly see the difference between those and you know, the pearl bumps. And with mosaic knitting, the idea is to use multiple colors with a series of slip stitches, both knit and pearl. So they can be both knit and pearl in, in patterns. And they create a graphic color work pattern by simply slipping the stitch and that pulls, pulls it up from the, you know, up to the current row as I just mentioned. And depending on your pattern, you may slip the main color or the contrast color. And that's what creates this patterning that, you, that we see here. And here's a little coaster that I created. You can see the effect. Same thing, this hashtag pattern that I'm pointing out. This is square number number two in your pattern material. So if you go and download, you'll see that square number two is the hashtag. Also with mosaic, you change colors every two rows and always on the right side. So think back to what I said a few minutes ago about stripes. This is like two row stripes with a series of slip stitches, and that's it. With these stitch squares, we will work two rows of the main color and then two rows of the contrast color. On the right side rows, we slip the stitches with the yarn held at the back. And on the wrong side rows, we slip the stitches with the yarn held at the front. Then you can see how you can take things a step further with square number three, because we added even more colors with this square. But we always keep the formula of changing to a new color every two rows. This square just shows you how creative you can get with this technique. Now, let me show you how this looks on the needles. All right, so this example, of this little swatch here, shows the hashtag pattern that um, I showed you earlier. And here's a little, um, my little coaster example of this swatch here. 
And you can see that if we look at the, these few rows that I've already worked, which, um, which are row one and two of the hashtag pattern, we can see these two green stitches here. These are slipped stitches, and they're actually slipped up two rows. And I'll, you'll see what that means when I work. I'm gonna work rows three and four in the pattern. And I have my written pattern next to me because with mosaic charts, I really do prefer to read the, direct, the handwritten directions or the, I'm sorry, the written directions because it's just easier on my eye. So I'm gonna work rows three and four and we're actually gonna start with our, our contrast color in this case. And so we're going to knit the first two stitches. So I'll go nice and slow for you. And then we're going to knit a stitch and then slip one. And we're always slipping purl-wise. This is the stitch that we're slipping purl-wise. We're on the right side. Row three is our right side and the yarn is at the back, it's held it back. So we slip one, and then what we're going to do next is knit five, so that's one, two, three, four, five. Now we're going to slip the next stitch again, purlwise with the yarn held at the back, and then we're going to knit three stitches, Slip the next stitch purlwise with the yarn held at the back because we're on the right side. And then we're going to knit the last three stitches. And you can see this in the, in the pattern instructions, the written instructions, or on the chart. But I will talk about the chart in just a few moments. So there's, there's row three. And now we're going to work, we're going to continue to work. I'm going to show you what, what row four is all about. So you can see, again, we've got a new collection of slipped stitches. So yeah, so now we're gonna work row four because it's kinda cool. You'll see we're working the same color that we were just working, so it's two row stripes. Remember we mentioned that before? It's like two row stripes with slipped stitches. So we get a, we, it's like we're going downhill, you know? It's no big deal. So here we go. So we're knitting. Now you see the slip stitch here? See that little horizontal bar? We're gonna slip that. But this time, we wanna make sure that the yarn is held at the front. Now I'm a continental knitter, so I use my middle finger to kind of, you know, work, use, I'm, to manipulate the yarn. So I'm gonna hold that at the front and then just slip that stitch. Again, purl-wise, it's always purl-wise. And then I'm going to knit. So there, there we go. I can see the stitches that have to be knitted. And again, slip, I pull it down, or it doesn't really have to be pulled down. Just making sure that that yarn is held towards you on the wrong side. And so any stitches that aren't slipped are knitted on the wrong and the right side. That's all you need to know. Easy peasy. Again, yarn at front, slip purlwise, and I We'll knit these last three stitches. Okay, so now another little thing that I want to show you. So we can see what do we have going on here. Let me get these little tails out of the way because now we're back to the right side. Okay, so we just worked three and four. Your odd numbered rows are your right side rows. So now we've got both of our colors at the front, which indicates it's time to change color. But before we do that, I just want to show you a couple of things here. So what's going on here? Well, we have some cool things happening on the needle. Let's take a look. All right, so we've got some new slip stitches popping up. We've got these purple ones. So you can see on previous rows, remember that those green stitches? Look, there they are. They're right down there. And as we grow this pattern, you'll see those kind of emerge. I'll just show you real quickly on our little coaster. See, we got some, and that's creating this whole interesting graphic look to the pattern. 
Working charts in mosaic knitting is a little bit different than traditional knitting charts, but it's actually much easier because the stitches on the wrong side row are identical to the stitches on the right side row. So, for example, you would knit every stitch and then when you come to the slip stitches, you slip them as, you, as they come to you. And you always remember to keep the yarn on the wrong side of the work. So let's take a look at the hashtag chart. So we're, we're starting on row five. So I'm going to use my, my tip of my needle here and kind of walk you through. So here's row five, okay, and that's another right side row that we'll be working. And I want to just kind of mention this little note down here so you know how to work this because it's a little bit different, like I said, than a traditional chart. So knit right side and wrong side rows using color in rightmost cell. And what that means here is, so since we're starting on this row five, this dark color is the color that we start with, which is our main color, as you can see here. And remember what I said earlier about the dark colors are your main color, like you knit the dark color and slip the light color and vice versa, depending on what your chart says. So that's where this comes into play. So basically we're going to work through, so it would be we're knitting the first two, we're slipping, we're knitting, slipping, knitting, and so on and so forth across the row. Then you can see something interesting here that you don't see on traditional charts because usually you're your wrong side row or your, you know, your odd numbered row would start one row up, like to the, it would be the next, the next one up. So we're not doing that here because what you're doing, if you remember when we worked just a few moments ago, we just coasted back downhill and we just, we knitted the stitches that we knitted on the opposite side and then we slipped the stitches as we came to them. So we're doing the same thing. So really, if you look at this, if you really want to follow the chart, just to make sure that, you know, you're staying on track, you look and you say, okay, well, what is the stitch that I need to start with in the rightmost cell? It still applies here on your, on your, odd, on your odd row, row six, which is this dark color. So you knit the first two, you slip, knit, slip, knit, and so on and so forth across the row. So that's pretty much it. Now, let's do this on the swatch that I have going so we can kind of wrap our brains around how this works again. Now we're going to work across row five. So you, now that you've got the chart in front of you, you can get a kind of a better grounding on what's happening on the needle as well. So let's just give it a try. So we're starting with our main color here, which is this purple color. So as we said before, we could see our two yarns are at the beginning of the row so that also indicates that we're on the right side. So we're going to start with our main color and we're going to start in row five. We're on the right side. So I'm going to knit those first two stitches. So you're looking at your chart with me, right? So that's, we're knitting two. And then when you, you can see that third stitch is a slip stitch. So what, what are we doing? We're keeping that yarn at back, right? You got it. Slipping as if to purl. And then we're going to actually slip one, knit one. And we're going to do that six times. So if you look at your chart, you'll see that, you know, this is probably a good time to check your written instructions. So I'm a really big fan of that. It's because in the written instructions, that's what it says. It says slip one, knit one, six times. So let's do it. So we've got slip one, knit one, that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then what do we have? We've got three left. So what do we do with these last three stitches? We're actually going to slip, checking your chart, you're slipping one as if to purl with yarn, held it back, and then you're knitting those last two stitches. And then you can see pretty cool stuff. See what's happening on the needle again. We've got some more slip stitch action and that little pattern is forming. So now we're going to turn the work. You can see that the purple yarn is still here all alone. That indicates that we're, we're on to the wrong side. We're about to work the wrong, the wrong side. 
and this clearly looks different than the front. So let's go ahead and check that chart. And remember what I said before, we're coasting downhill. That's all you're doing. You're just kind of going back down and getting a little bit of a breather. So we're just going to knit all the stitches as we come to them, right? All the stitches on the needle, except for those stitches that are slipped. And you can clearly see that with that horizontal thread. So what do we do here? We slip as if to purl and that yarn is held at front, knit, slip, knit, slip, knit, slip. So you remember we're, it's identical. We're repeating what we did. That's all we're doing. So if you think about that, see, look at how there's two bars. I just want to show you real quick. There's two bars that we lifted, one on the right side, and I'm sorry, we slipped, not lifted, but um, there, there are these two bars, right? So what that means is this stitch on the needle, it's lifted up two rows. So of course, it's going to be pretty long, elongated and, and exaggerated. So you can see that again here. So bring that yarn to the front and you're slipping. So we've got two rows that this stitch has, has been lifted or slipped and then knit, slip again, and then knit those last two. So let's turn it around and take a look-see. So here we go. So you can see that these stitches and how they're lifted and you've got two rows behind that. It's pretty cool. So, you know, I just wanted to mention one last thing about the charts. You know, sometimes it's a little bit busy on the eye, so I really like to use the, uh, the written instructions, and it's a good way to double check yourself. And I like to use this, like, a little sticky note, you know, so you can kind of move it, helps your eye, and also, you know, I like to do that on the chart, too. Um, this is probably not, you know, brand new information, but, you know, these little, these little tiny, tiny ones are really cool because you can kind of line it up exactly where you need to. And then also another one for, you know, wherever you are on the written, um, on the written instructions. Um, so for example, on this, on this row five, we slipped a lot of stitches. So if you're looking at the written instructions, it's a, it's a good double check because you know you're slipping one and knitting one six times. You know, my eye would go crazy if I had to look at that on the chart. So, you know, I really like to rely on both the chart and the written instructions because it really does give, gives me the confidence that I need and I'm sure it's going to help you too. Well, that pretty much covers the basics and a really good overview so you can get started working on these really cool squares. When you're done, why not bump things up a notch and make a pair of these wondrous wristers or the Color Splash Boot Toppers. Now these patterns are available to you for free for a limited time only while the Creative Knitting Winter Issue is on sale. So go on over to creativeknittingmagazine.com and grab a copy for yourself and then head on over to anniescraftstore.com to purchase Plymouth Encore Worsted so you can complete these projects and the squares that were featured in this tutorial. To watch more videos like this, just click on the Video Tutorial Archive and you can watch every tutorial in the collection. You can also find me on the Creative Knitting Editor's blog, Splendid Sticks, at creativeknittingmagazine.com backslash blog. Have fun, and I'll see you next time.